Hey guys, this is Nick Christopher from Mob Tales. Hope you guys are doing well. I uh, just want to say thanks a lot for your support. Please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, today we have a very interesting guest, a woman finally, second time in a row, thank God. Um, her name is Aileen Evans. She's an actress, very good one at that, which I've uh, had the pleasure of watching in a, a show that we're going to be discussing in a little bit. Uh, so I just want to say, Aileen, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was a pleasure, for sure. And as fact, you're in New York, correct? Yes, I am. I've been here for six years now. Oh, good. All right. So we're in the, I wasn't sure if you were in L.A. or somewhere else or in the beginning. I wasn't positive. So uh, it's really cool to that you're in, in, in hometown like me. Yeah, <laughs> definitely prefer the East Coast. All right. Cool. Awesome. Um, well, I did. You obviously saw the questions because I emailed them to you. Yes. Um, so um, I'll just go right ahead at it. Um, when did acting become a passion for you? And were there any actors that inspired you? So I would say I've had a passion for performing ever since I was a kid. I started dancing when I was six and I went I followed that all the way through college. That's my main background. As far as acting goes, I actually really only started taking acting seriously within the last two years. Uh, oh. That's when I like really decided, OK, I'm really going to dive into this. But there's so much that translates from dancing to acting. Um, but that's it really has only been in the last two years that I'm like, oh, this is hmm. this is what I want to be doing is the acting side. Um, as far as actors that have inspired me, I mean, there's there's so many. I have always, always loved uh, Rachel McAdams, Margot Robbie, um, currently like Florence Pugh and Andrew Garfield, I think are just two incredible powerhouses. They have a movie coming out later this year together. And I'm so excited because I'm like, oh, that's just going to be an incredible pairing. Um, so, yeah, I think that's that's those are the ones that I definitely look to. Uh, the most frequently. Meryl Streep, I mean, you can't not love her. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, dancing, you mentioned the, the what type of dancing, basically. So, yeah, I mean, I, I've trained in pretty much everything. I have a degree in contemporary ballet. I, like, really followed the classical ballet route. But all throughout training classical ballet, I always took, like, the jazz and lyrical. Like, I even did hip-hop. Like, all of it. I always wanted more than just ballet but ballet is really that that base that it's the technique if you can do ballet well you can pretty much dance anything well just like with in acting like if you can do shakespeare well you're going to be able to do like pretty much anything you get thrown at with acting so ballet is the same that's why i focused on it more yeah that makes sense what you're saying makes sense because they're both foundations exactly you know? exactly so where, where you go from the next step that's true um, now on that concept that you just mentioned, um, you did film, you did also theater as well. Um, yes, I did. If so, where, where did you do the theater work and, and can you mention some of the productions? Yeah. So I actually just finished this summer. I just finished my very first play. So like I said, I am relatively new to the acting world, but I did, um, a month, actually just over a month long run of Shakespeare's Much Ado About Nothing. I was Beatrice. It was produced by Kelsey Grammer, which was amazing. Um, and it was at the Gene Frankel Theater in downtown New York. But so, like I said, I was Beatrice in that. And that was my first ever full play. And it was really nice to get back to the stage because the last time I was on stage was for dance and you know a, a, like a story ballet so it was nice to tell a story this time uh with actual lines and characters instead of just the dancing well on that concept uh before i get to the next question i might say this may, might mention this later on but if you were to compare because you've done some film work and now you've done theater mm -hmm. now if you were to compare the two which one you find more difficult which one would it be? I would, I would I'll probably, you're probably going to tell me theater, but. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I think they, I'm not sure I actually have an answer because I think they're different enough, but I wouldn't necessarily say one is harder over the other. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Because theater, you might be going longer. So you're going to be doing it over and over and over again. But that also means that you have more time to prepare. TV film is like really, really fast. But that also means you have to prepare normally pretty quickly. And you're also going to be filming the story like out of order. You don't get to experience the full character arc in order, but you still have to make sure that once the pieces are pieced back together, that character arc is intact. Um, I I saw this on the question and I, and I was like, I'm not actually sure what my answer is because I really think that they both serve different elements to one's acting career. And I'm not sure one is necessarily more difficult than the other. I will say, I think theater will more likely make you a better actor mm-hmm. than if you just did film. So, yeah, I would agree. But wouldn't you say that theater, when you've done it, because you've done it already, um, in front of an audience, you get automatic satisfaction, where with film, you got to wait to see if this was, you know, people like it or whatever. But, well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's true. Um, But it also depends on, like, how you're approaching it, right? Like, I'm not necessarily going on set to do something or going on stage to do something to be like, I want everyone who sees me to like me. Like, if you're doing it for that reason, it's probably going to make your life really, really, really painful. So (laughs) I'm doing it because I love doing it obviously i want to do well and therefore yes there is that like approval from peers and audience members and it's true in theater you can hopefully get that instant feedback of the audience enjoying it Mm -hmm. um but at the same time you do like whatever you do in the moment is what they see versus film you can have multiple takes. You can like perfect it a little yeah. bit more. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, well, all that now it's on something else differently, which is acting in a way, I would believe, because you started doing music videos, like the one with Brian Walker, Red Flags. Um, now that's now that's now that's a different animal now. But we're going from film, theater, now music video. So. Um, if you would have now to compare the film work to music videos, because so people can understand the difference, how well, somebody who does either one, how would you compare the two? Yeah. So first of all, Brian Walker is amazing. I've worked with him on many of his yeah, music videos. I'm actually mm-hmm. currently talking to him right now for another <laughs> one that we're going to film because he's sort of created this like, music video universe of like the same characters appearing over and over again. Um, Mm -hmm. So in that way, it is actually rather similar to film because you have actual reoccurring characters. That's not always the case with music videos, obviously. Um, But for me, it was actually a perfect transition from, because I went from dancing into modeling, which led into more like commercial work, which then led into acting. And so the music video sort of sat right in between that, like the modeling and the acting side. Mm -hmm. And because obviously you're not giving lines, but you are still trying to tell a story. Uh, And so there's almost, it's like acting with like a little bit of the pressure taken off, I would say. Uh, because you're still trying to convey a character, you're still trying to convey uh, a certain scene playing out, or you're just vibing. Like, it depends on the music video. One of the reasons I like working with Brian is I feel like he approaches his music videos very cinematically. Like, he writes and produces all of his own music, but then he also comes up with and directs all of his own music videos, which is, it's it's so impressive to watch how he is able to approach all of that. And that's not always the case for a lot of musicians. So I think to relate music videos back to film acting, I think it's really that mix of acting modeling together. So it's kind Mm -hmm. of that like step back from acting, but blending with the modeling side. Okay. Uh, What genre would that music, does this music be in? He's he's definitely a pop artist, very much pop. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Um 
you also went into TV, you know, uh, acting uh, with uh, Quarantine Leap uh, to an award-winning horror short film called The Part in 24. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, so Apartment 24 was actually created by a close friend of mine. Um, her name's uh, Izzy, and she just created, it's a short film that she created. And it was honestly, it was a, just a bunch of friends. We all came together. We made it. We literally filmed it in like a day, or I was involved for a day. There was much more that happened behind the scenes. Um, but it was kind of a whirlwind. It was like, a, oh, yeah, I will totally, I'll t come help you. It was like really when I was just starting out and she decided to just submit it to a bunch of festivals and stuff. And we got some awards for it, which was, I mean, with anything you create, no matter how much effort, talent, creativity you put into it, there's, there's no way to guarantee to know how it's going to play out. So that was, that was definitely um, a pleasant surprise um, on apartment 24 um, Quarantine Leap was an interesting project because I actually wrote that one, um, which was which is my only credit to writing at the moment. But um, the creator came to me with this concept, um, which if anyone's interested, they can find the entire series on on YouTube because that's where it, it exists right now is on YouTube. But mm -hmm. It, he just came to me with this concept and was like, normally I collaborate with the the actor to come up with a fun concept. And I ended up just writing like the whole thing and he loved it. And that was, that was a really fun experience because you don't always get uh, to contribute anything to the plot of what you're portraying. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's pretty cool. Um, now this is the, one of the most important questions that I, I I'm interested in, <laughs> uh, based, I mean, based on the, on the, on the show, Mob Tales. Um, and I watched you perform, uh, playing Phyllis McGuire, uh, James Giancana's, uh, mistress, and which was really, really well on the show, Mafia, Mafia Spies, uh, which was a great show, um. I'm still watching. I'm not even done with all the series, but it's you know really what? good. I'm not even done with the series. <laughs> oh yeah, I know that. And I haven't even been able to finish it yet. Yeah, it's still going. Um, <laughs> it must have been really a challenge for you to take on such an iconic character as Phyllis McGuire. And I even know the show because a lot of people watch documentaries. You know, there's no lines. You know, you know, nobody's talking. They're just acting out their specific role. Um, what did you do to prepare for such an iconic character? Yeah, this, so I loved the process of diving into a real person. Because normally when you are given a project, you have your character and that character is sort of elusive. Like you don't necessarily know who they are, what they're about. Like there are hints that you're getting throughout the script um, or the play or whatever. And you have to kind of piece it together. When you're approaching a documentary and you're portraying a real person that means you have like all the answers in front of you you just have to go out and find them so it was really fun to just i even did this like for the initial audition like i had two rounds of auditions and both of them i was doing like some deep dives into her life learning everything i possibly could about her to try to like understand her her mind her experience what that must have been like because there is that increased pressure of, as an actor, we're always making choices, right? And when you're building your own character, who's to say that choice is necessarily wrong? I mean, there's some, you know, give and take within that. But again, when you're portraying a real life person, there kind of is a right and wrong. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you're like really portraying them accurately. So, I mean... The series Mafia Spies is based off of the book by Thomas Meyer. I read mm -hmm. through that entire thing, took everything out of it that I could about Phyllis, and then just like did deep dives into watching any video interview, anything I could find about her. And I found like probably as much as I could on the internet and just tried to like consume that and portray her in the most authentic way I could but like you said we don't have any lines so it had to really be within the physicality of it 
So you being that the case, how difficult was that? Because you know, a lot of people, a lot of actors, you know, it's very hard for them to take a role like that because you, again, there's no lines, right? So you have to, like you said, portray the character without talking. Without, I mean, that was, I'm, um, that must have been very difficult to do, and um, it was amazing how you did it. I mean, I know the Thank character. You. And I know the storyline. I know when I before I even watched it, I knew everything about it already. Uh, but like the part where you uh, punch your manager in the arm a couple of times. <laughs> yes, like, that was wow, a fun you film. Good, <laughs> you gave him some pretty good punches, I can tell. I said, "Wow!" And then you know when he like threw you to the ground and all that whole that whole scene right there. I thought it was pretty incredible because I mean I know that it ha actually happened. It did. Uh, I know it's wild. So how did I mean? So, I mean, I'm just trying to for people that want to watch the show or are going to watch the show. Um, you know, how did you? I mean, I, I remember you explained to us how you prepared, but how as an actor do you prepare for a role like that when you know there's no lines? Like, how do you get into you know character? Yeah, I'm sure that's very difficult. <laughs> well, I think this is actually where some of my dance background really, really does come into play in my favor here, because, you know, like I said, I have always had a like a love for performing and within dance, especially with ballet and story ballets, you are still telling a story. But mm -hmm. again, without any lines and without like normal movement, it's all through dancing. <laughs> but you're still being able to portray a character and tell a story. And so I think there's a certain amount of physicality that as a dancer, you have right at your fingertips that as an actor who hasn't necessarily trained in movement studies might not necessarily be as comfortable within one's own body. So I think that really helped for me personally, acting wise, a lot of my character development process involves journaling and just sort of like, almost journaling as if you are the character it's kind of like a, a meld it's like when I first start out I might describe it as like she 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 but then as I keep going it'll kind of morph into I and that's what how I'm like starting to connect with the character more but to just try to mentally get into their state you sort of have to relate it to experiences you already can understand this is also where i think an actor's like biggest number one tool is empathy because if you can feel empathy towards anybody that means that you can imagine what their experience is like and try to embody that so preparation wise like when i would get on set i always have um uh, like a soundtrack or a music playlist that I put together for the character. And so I'll just like put one headphone in while I'm like talking to hair and makeup. I will say on a project like this with no lines, a huge amount of the character development comes from hair and makeup and wardrobe departments. They did an incredible, incredible job with Phyllis. Like mm -hmm. they really helped me transform. Um, but I, it's just sort of sitting there and like immersing yourself in that world and mentally trying to shift into all of the work that you've already put into it. So that when you show up on set, it's all there. You can pull from it and like settle into that character. Yeah. I mean, it could have been, it must've been pretty interesting to take on uh, a role where it was a timepiece because it took place during the sixties. Yeah. So, uh, how, that's another thing, you know, you gotta, you have to try to adapt the mentality that they had back then. Oh, how do they talk? How do they act? Yes. How do they move? There's a lot going on in there. I mean, and how was it working? I don't, I didn't, I don't recall the gentleman's name. The one who played Sam Giancana. Yes, um, Chris Pinto. Yeah, how, how, was it, how was it like working with him? He was lovely. He was so nice to work with. Um, it's really funny. They did a fantastic job of aging him. <laughs> In the production, they managed to age him like 10 years by just putting a headpiece on. Like, because he doesn't actually look like that. So they put like a bald cap with hair on him, which I swear made him look 10 years older. 
Um, but it was fun to talk about like transforming into a character. Like as soon he is such a sweet soul. And he like transforms into the mob boss as soon as you put that like hair piece on him. Um, but no, it was really, really nice working with him. Um, for anyone who's watched this show, there are some like, you know, kissing scenes. That's always something yeah. that you need to make sure. I was going to bring that up in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, they, so yeah, I'll, I'll, we can get to that um, in a minute then, but it was just, it's always nice to work with people who are professional, open, comfortable, mm -hmm. like, yeah, he was he was lovely, lovely to work with. Well, because I know when it comes to something like that, when you're working with, because uh, uh, I'm I'm trying to get my own film made as we speak, and I've already done a, a trailer for the film, uh, so I know what it's like about finding two characters, especially a man and a woman, uh, to make sure there's a chemistry. You know, yes. it has to has to be there. So, do you obviously it worked between you and Chris? Um, was that something that you guys had to prepare ahead of time to see if the chemistry was there. Was that, was that necessary? So in this casting process, there wasn't any sort. So normally like if there's two like co-leads, like romantic interests, uh, typically there's going to be like a chemistry read of some sort for the nature of this project. They did not do a chemistry read at all. So like I literally, okay. I, we just started working on set. I always, <laughs> always make a point to reach out to whoever my co-star or like you know people that I'm working with the other actors I always make a point to reach out and connect with them before we start work That's so smart. that when we show up on set there's already a little bit of chemistry having been built like a little bit of familiarity you know uh that I think is really important because it's true it's like I mean I just worked on a project where if I hadn't met up with this person beforehand, it was literally like showing up on set and first scene was like super, super emotional. And then the next scene was like a makeout scene. And it's like, if we hadn't met up beforehand, it's like, hi, nice to meet you. Let's try to do this without being awkward. Like it's difficult. <laughs> so I think, it, I think it is important to try to establish that uh, working relationship before you even step on set. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, working on this project, Mafia Spies, uh, you guys filmed last year, am I correct? Yes. Okay. Um, so prior to the filming process, so to, how did you, um, you obviously uh, got the role, obviously. Um, was there a major competition uh, to get into this part? So that's the thing. As an actor, you never really know. You never really know how many people they look at. I, I did ask the director at one point because I was curious. Um, I may be remembering this wrong, but I think he said that they looked at a couple, like, I mean, he himself didn't, but like through the casting they went through, like the casting mm -hmm. director sent it out to like, I think they said it was a couple hundred. Wow. Because he's not just trying to find, especially for this, where you're trying to portray a real life person. It's not just mm -hmm. about the talent it really is also trying to find someone who can convincingly look like that person. So in that regard, I'm just very lucky that I have the face shape that I have, <laughs> you know, like I got lucky on that front, but that sometimes is a big part of the casting process. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you do resemble Phyllis McGuire. I mean, you have that look that is true. Um, now based on the, from this project on, is there, what are you working on currently that you can discuss? So one thing I'm rehearsing right now, um, I am going to be doing, it's only going to be for one weekend, but I am doing a production of the one act three woman play Laundry and Bourbon um, across from its sister play Lone Star, which is a one act three man play. Um, I'm going to be doing that in August up in Connecticut at the Carriage Barn Art Center very excited for that. Uh, so we're just, we're still in the process of rehearsing that. Um, I then also just finished filming a, uh, a digital series that's going to be coming out. I believe they said it's going to be coming out this fall. Um, but that one was very fun to work on. It is a romance story. I'm the lead, which was amazing. This one actually has lines. <laughs> Um, have actually been working on projects with lines since this, uh, since Mafia Spies. 
Um, but that one was really fun and I'm very excited to see it come together. I'm not sure how much more I can say about it other than that. Um, mm. But I mean, if people, I will be posting about it as I can. So if people want to check out social media, then I'll keep them updated. But those are the two. And I'm also prepping another digital series right now that I'm going to start filming later this week. So there's definitely a lot happening right now. And I'm just trying to keep up with it. And I'm, it's good, happy problems. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Well, the, the one you're talking about that you are working on this week, you said, is that you have your own project? No, nope, this is another one. So I don't have any of my own personal projects happening right now. Um, I mean, not that I don't want that. I just, I have all of mm -hmm. these, like I have these other, these other bookings, which is really, really fantastic right now. So yeah, no, it's, it's through, you know, I did the whole audition casting process. Like it's a whole other production company leading it. Um, well, if you were to pick something you would want to do, you know, uh, for yourself in this field, would it be directing, producing, uh writing where, where, where would you like to uh, land you know it's funny you say that because i have been sort of like on the periphery of producing a lot recently and i've had many friends who are producers who are like you're about to start producing i can tell you're you're about to become a producer i was like ah because i don't like i don't want to get distracted from the actual acting part of it um so I definitely wouldn't resist that because especially nowadays within the industry, like you really do need to know how to make your own stuff happen and like make your own opportunities. That's just part of it. So as far as that goes, I mean, there's as far as like what I love doing, it is the acting. So anything that I can do to then help facilitate the acting more I would be fine doing. And I think that typically lands more in that production side of it. Um, Cause I mean, I could write, I could direct, but those are major talents in their own right. Mm -hmm. So I could potentially dabble. I could see myself potentially dabbling in them in like much further in the future, but I think realistically producing is uh, closer on the horizon for me. Well, I'm going to ask you one last question and it's a very delicate one and some actors don't like to answer this <laughs> um, okay yeah <laughs> um because currently the way things are going in the industry which you probably notice yourself hollywood is fading a little bit and independent films are coming up big time and especially with the streaming and everything mm -hmm. um how do you perceive as an actress how do you perceive that whole um, element right, currently how Hollywood is going one direction and they're getting a little worried because the independent market is growing at a fast rate uh, especially with everything streaming like I said um, how, in your own personal view how do you see it? This is a fantastic question I'm very excited to answer this okay <laughs> so first of all there's always something Hollywood is worried about and single decade there's a new thing i mean go back to when talkies became a thing they were like this is going to be the end of us like <laughs> there's always something changing in the hall in hollywood um as far as going i completely agree i think it's com totally going in the direction of independent honestly i think it's kind of copying the way the music industry has sort of gone mm -hmm. right now That's where true. Nowadays, like if you are a beginner like artist, you are not signing with a record label. Like you're you're just not. Or if you are, that might actually be, help hold you back. It's really only worth it when you are in that upper echelon. And so I think it's it's somewhat similar right now within movie making and indie markets. I personally find this as a fantastic opportunity for creatives. Because if you are in the indie market, that means you do not have a corporate suit telling you to follow a formula that they think works because, oh, it worked mm -hmm. this one time. But guess what? The reason that worked that one time was because it wasn't following a formula. So <laughs> I think allow, like having a larger indie market, sure, that means that there's going to be higher risks. Yes. However, it is going to create a better like hotbed for 
creativity to actually properly thrive without that like corporate glove stifling it because that's I mean that's why we have so many remakes and sequels right now that just keep mm -hmm. flopping yeah because they don't have any content that's why no because they don't have they any original ideas and I totally still like understand the strategy behind the nostalgia content And I mean, look at Inside Out too. Like it just destroyed the box office. So like there is a place for that. And corporate knows how to do that. But when you're looking for the new original movie, it's not going to be coming out of a corporate office. It's going to be coming out of a creative brain. Mm -hmm. And well, so- one, one last, one question I want to add to that, which I, I agree with everything you're saying. Um, As an independent guy myself, I, I, I'm, with, I'm in that world. But the only bad thing about that, I think, and you might agree on this, that it it becomes saturated, where it's just like everybody his grandmother thinks they're a director or thinks they're an actor. So it, it kind of like, it almost discredits some people like yourself, who's a very good actress, because then you got, you know, Joe Schmo down the block who thinks he can act. You know, and they, they come well, out with these films that are terrible. I mean, I think the work will always speak for itself. That's ultimately what it is. Because there's always going to be Joe Schmo who thinks they can act. There's always going to be, I mean, let's be real. There's always going to be the famous athlete who's like, I'm going to be in a movie now. <laughs> and it's yeah, like, right. <laughs> that's great. You'll definitely get views because of who you are, but it's not because you're good at acting. That's true. Well, which there, there's, I'm not trying to give any shade to any like athletes on that. It's just, it's a perfect example of like mm -hmm. anyone, so many people think they can act and even actors who are good at acting question whether they can act, you know, like, <laughs> so <laughs> as long as you are putting the most, your best effort, your best foot forward your work will always speak for itself. So if even if it is a bad script, there is still so much potential for an actor to build it out and improve it. If it takes a bit more effort, sure. I mean, if you're given Shakespeare, if you just know how to read the lines properly, you're going to be giving a pretty damn good performance because it's Shakespeare. He's done so much of the work for you. But if you're getting like a not so well-written script that doesn't really... You, there's a lot of character development you as the actor have to do on your own to like justify certain things. But if you do it, it can improve. And who knows, maybe someone will watch the, the project and be like, you know, this project is not, or this movie is not good, but she did a good job in it. That's always my goal. That's always my goal. Whether it is a good scene as an overall good project or not, I want to be able to like stand by my performance and have someone be able to say, Maybe the story wasn't great, but she did a great job with what she had. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's true. You know, as long as you make yourself stand out, that's all that matters. The integrity <laughs> of your craft, really. Yes, exactly. Um, well, I'd like to say thank you very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Uh, you're a delightful uh, person to interview. And I'm really glad we got a woman finally on the show you know, you're, like, you're like the second woman we had on the show and it's it's been very difficult we had 64 shows already and i mean you know, with, with the category or with the topic being mob i'm not totally surprised <laughs> well there, there is women out there but it's just it's been oh no a absolutely little, a little bit difficult with that uh but if on on the last note for people that want to check you out where would they go how where would they look you up Where could they, you know, find more about you? So, I mean, I have my IMDb page, uh, but I would say like the place to be getting like the best, most relevant updates is definitely going to be my Instagram. So that's going to be smiling underscore Island. So my name's Island, smiling Island, right? <laughs> so that's S-M-I-L-I-N underscore A-I-S-L-I-N-N. -N. Uh, and I will, I'm constantly posting about whatever rel like current projects I have going on. And from there, you'll be able to like find whatever it is that I've worked on in the past. And what oh, I have. Sounds cool. Yeah, I, I do know you work, you're building your website. I know you guys are working on that. I know yes, that. yes. I have my website uh, that's been under construction for 
a minute because I keep getting distracted with other projects, which again, happy problems. But yeah, I got, I definitely got to get that thing updated. <laughs> all right awesome well again thank you very much it's been, it's been a pleasure and uh hopefully we can stay in touch Thank you. Yes, this has been lovely. Thank you so much for having me on. no thank you